You've probably heard some talk about the New World Order. The media wants us to believe that this is a topic for conspiracy theorists, although it has been talked about for generations by presidents such as George Bush Sr., Nelson Mandela and Bill Clinton. We have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations a new world order, a world where the rule of law, not the law of the jungle, governs the conduct of nations. When we are successful, and we will be, we have a real chance at this new world order, an order in which a credible United Nations can use its peacekeeping role to fulfill the promise and vision of the UN's founders. After 1989, President Bush kept said, and it's a phrase that I often use myself, that we needed a new world order. That uh, the affirmative task we have now is, uh, is to actually um, uh, create uh, uh, a new world order. But also by the world's most famous philanthropists such as Cecil Rhodes, David Rockefeller, Henry Kissinger and even George Soros. I think you need a, a new world order that China has to be part of the process of creating it and they have to buy in, they have to own it. These important figures, who apart from Mandela, were all among the top of the elite when they were still alive, are not the only ones who dream about an all-powerful world government. In 2015, the UN presented its controversial Agenda 2030, which is almost identical to Klaus Schwab's Great Reset. In their own words, the UN, like Schwab, wants to ensure that by 2030, poverty, hunger, environmental pollution and disease no longer exist on Earth. It sounds like a sympathetic plan, until you read the fine print. You see, the idea is that Agenda 2030 is going to be paid for by us, the citizens. And just as it is currently required of us that we give up our basic rights for the sake of public health, we will be demanded to give up our wealth in favor of poverty reduction. These are not conspiracy theories. You can read this for yourself on their official website. In short, it boils down to this. The UN wants to take the tax money from all Western countries and give it to the mega corporations of the elite, who will be contracted to rebuild society. Globally, a completely new infrastructure is needed, because fossil fuels must be made a thing of the past, according to the UN. For this immense project, a world government is needed, says the UN. And the same UN takes it upon herself to be this global government. Just like Schwab, the UN also believes that a pandemic is the perfect opportunity to accelerate the implementation of Agenda 2030. It is worrisome that the WEF and the UN openly admit that they consider pandemics and other disasters as an opportunity to transform society, especially since we have seen that the elite have all the resources at their disposal to make us believe that there is a pandemic, and even to create one. So we certainly should not take these things lightly, and we should examine them carefully. And when we do that, we come across things that are even more troubling. On Friday, October 18, 2019, months before the pandemic was declared, a meeting was held at the Pierre Hotel in New York City for a select group of about 130 very important guests, including politicians and the world's most respected medics and pharmacists. The purpose of the meeting was to simulate the possible scenarios in the event of a global pandemic. This could be a coincidence, you might say. For this simulation, however, a coronavirus was used as an example. The simulation covered in detail how the coronavirus would develop and how they could only control this through the intensive collaboration of entire industries, governments and government agencies. Once again, a new world order to save us from destruction. Does it surprise you when I tell you that this meeting called Event 201 was organized by none other 
and the World Economic Forum, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and the John Hopkins Institute? This is not a conspiracy theory. Check the official website of Event 201 for yourself. Perhaps at this point, it will no longer surprise you that the German Robert Koch Institute, which like every national health institute in the world, is closely linked to the WHO, which is funded by Bill Gates, created a similar simulation in 2012. As was the case during Event 201, the simulation assumed the coronavirus. This simulation assumed that in a Southeast Asian food market, the coronavirus would spread from animal to human. How coincidental, isn't it? In this simulation, it takes several weeks for the authorities to identify the virus, allowing it to spread worldwide. A simulation is made of the consecutive three years, in which there are lockdowns and economies are destroyed. But also the impact on society is simulated in all aspects, even the protests. I won't tire you with the details. In fact, you can download this analysis for yourself from the website of the German government.